G'day and welcome back to the Pillars of Eternity. It's time to talk to Chikek once more and uh, see if he can take us to where Matt Kina is hanging. I'm looking for a way into the Cave of the Lost Words. It's close to surface, a top of city. Took another human there once. Chikek traveled where Eggfriend went. We go! Hooray! More digging! And this Who time we'll get you? a cool mare thing. This woman's skin is white, the color of alabaster or fresh ivory, flat, black, je uh, black eyes, surrounded by sharply pointed uh, features stare coldly at you. She wears jet black hair cut straight at the shoulders. Her clothes are functional and drab. Her cloak is fastened by a necklace of five canisters, each of different shape. She turns a black device over and over in her hand. Where did you come from? How did you know where to find me? Her startled expression becomes a dark glower. A keen blade flickers through her fingers. You're sure it wasn't there a moment ago? Did I? Did I invite her here? No, I wouldn't have done that. I, I wouldn't have thought it possible, but it appears we've found someone even more paranoid than poor Allegan. Mapper told me where to find you. Who? I don't know. Wait, him. Him! That tattooed freak who can't stop talking about every speck of dirt is a set foot on. But how did he know? How did he get here? What did he see? She casts a gaze around the ca cave as if to assure herself nothing's missing. Maybe I need to hang a map or two around here. Improve the decor. Well, where was he? Cliff's head, circus man. I know he's hiding, looking for something down below. That's why he came looking for me. He's in the underbelly, isn't he? A little short work. He's slow, doesn't use weapons well. Bit of a limp. Yes, just as soon as I... She sees you standing there, her hands jerk, and the blade's there again, as if she'd forgotten you were here. Who in... The caster? Right. How new are you? What are the circumstances of your birth? When did that happen? I was born recently, in the broken dome down in the reef of Fallen Worlds. So you are the Falling Star. I've heard of you. Sagus' incessant buzzing reaches even through these cave walls. You're one of us, then. Disemboweling would be just a waste of time for you. You're a mess and a mess of me. What do you want from me? Um, I was investigating some murders down in the underbelly. Someone thought it was your work. I remember that. I've killed lots of people. Lots. In the underbelly, though? No, I don't think so. Do you want someone killed? No, wait. Could tell you, but my mind won't let me. I don't remember if I were holding it. I also heard you might know who can repair a device I found in the reef. Something called a resonance chamber. The resonance? Ah, yes, of course. He would have hidden it there. A crooked grin plays around the corner of his mouth and then vanishes. I know who can help you. Or did. It slips away. My mind has holes in it. One of our brothers took a rusty scalpel to my thoughts. My memories. I can't... She trails off. She catches a hold of the table and seems to anchor her. Her eyes harden. I'll remember that. No, no, you must do something for me. She caresses the black jagged device, knobbed and protruded with antenna. A sigil reminiscent of your tattoo is emblazoned on it. This is Tasha's mare caster. I want you to enter his mare and find out what you can about the Jacques. I'm convinced, I'm convinced it's key. So, what is a mare caster? Ha, huh, am I really the first one to say the word to you? Oh, you're in for a sweet, a surprise, sweet sister. Everyone, the cast off has one. Just like every cast off has this. No one knows what they're for. A dear used to think they were a byproduct of the transfer process, just like us. She seems lost in the thought for a moment. Wherever they came from, they can be used like a sort of temporal viewer. You can relive the life, an event in the life of a cast off whose mayor cast it is. That event's called a mayor. Can a mare cast be used to spy on another cast off? Not spy, more like see pictures of their past, like watching them from inside their minds at times when they burned or raged or changed or when their life was in a moment of flux. Why can't you enter the mare? Do you think I've tried? She snarls with sudden rage, knife hands went from your neck. Do you think I'd waste my time with a newborn, a thief who steals in my home if there are any chances I could do this myself? Her shoulders heave up and down with each angry breath. I try in my mind fills with static, like I'm talking to a murderer, only it slashes and stabs and burns at me, and I can't, I can't, and I'll only make things worse, maybe it already has. Why am I angry? Did you... No, it'll be alright, just find the damn Jacques, and I'll tell you what you need to know. What's a Jacques? You you don't know. I thought it was a common instrument. No, no, my, must not be so much anymore, one of the curses of a long life. <laughs> Fashions come and go before you can even know they exist. 
probably easier just let him go and make new ones of your own like some of the other castoffs. Sorry, no, not sorry. You should know this. You should know about things. History, that's what life is. Knowing and doing. Matt Keeney, you need to focus. Tell her what she, see, what she needs. A Jacques is an ancient woodwind, and this one was kept sealed behind massive doors from a prior world. It had powers, but, but I can't remember what those powers were. How do I enter it? Hold the mare caster. You'll feel the tug immediately. Don't resist. Empty your mind and let the tides pull you into the mare caster. Then just watch. Watch him. Watch for the Jacques. And when he's done with it, pull your mind away from Tasha's and tell me what you saw. Oh, and don't try to change anything. Why, why, why shouldn't I? Nothing serious. It's not that you can change the past. But I might need you to learn a specific piece of information. If you change something, then you might go the wrong way. All right, let's do this thing. Mare time. She plucks Tasha's mare caster from the table. She looks at it and you, and at you, and back at the device. She licks her lips as if weighing her options, and then, before she can to hesitate any more, she slaps it into your hands. It's surprisingly heavy. Do it. Find the Jacques. Bring me my answers. You focus on the device, and you feel something tugging at your mind. Everything is wrong. Tasha's body. Yours now. Clings like a wet cloak. The world's too cl bright for nighttime. Everything's too clear. Distance is too close. Edges too sharp. Memories like blood flies buzz about your head, whizzing away before you can catch them. Hard ridden and neen heave their flanks and huff behind you. Like you, they've gone too long without rest. There's Matkina, much newer Matkina, as though drawn by a pandering portraitist. Too soft, too fresh, and too pretty. All wrong. On the wastes, you see the light of campfires, and in the humble village before you, a bigger, brighter fire burns. It's a pyre. Inside, a body that's too large burns too slowly. Greasy coils of smoke rise into the night. Villagers circle a bonfire, wailing and shaking. The headman's rough voice continues the ritual. From exile, you are released. Among the mourners, some echo, you are released. He throws a handful of powder into the fire, metal salts perhaps, and a spray of shining embers rises into that, mostly gold, some green, some purple. From wrath you are released as the embers fade, they echo him, as the embers fade towards the plains you uh, float out towards the plains and fade among the stars and campfires. You hear Makina whisper reverently, you are released. Okay, perception maybe, let's see what we got. There we go. Stare at the distant campfires, try to see what they were. Wow, okay. You squint your unnatural eyes and focus the, until the pyre, the village, and everything else fades away. At last, the blurry campfires resolve into something crisper. You see the faint shadows of men around them, men in long coats and broad hats, painstakingly cleaning their gisales and daggers. But there are perhaps a hundred of them. Makina sees you staring and grunts. Sad nights. From her tone, it's obvious they're no friends of hers or yours. What? Um, let's go with... What's going on here, Makina? Makina answers, without looking your way, her eyes are locked onto the fire and the flesh inside it. It's what they do when one the hill people dies. Never a burial, always upward. Plains people, like me, we can bring kindling and weep. We're forbidden to join the chant. Never got used to the smell of it, even when they burn juniper or balsam. It's worst at the end. When it's done, there's no more wailing. For them, it really is release. She looks thoughtful, but says no more. Try to remember who you are and why you're here. The memories try to buzz away, but you're too quick for them. You seize them and squeeze. This body is you are, Tash. You already knew that, but now you know yourself as you didn't before. The body fits better. You're a cast off. When you call on the tides, you can destroy memories. You're a soldier of sorts, in service of the militia, under the command of Page Reckon. You're a scout, McKinn is a spotter. The two of you are not warriors, you're specialists, you're killers. You're not here to kill, though. You're here to pro promise something to the villagers, and to get an object, a flute of some sort, the Jacques. As for why that flute and others remain a mystery beyond your reach. Wait until the ritual is finished. As the body burns and the mourners chant, you wait in the shadows at the edge of the village. At last, the corpse is consumed, and the headman gives a final cry. 
To the distant dark you are released. The villagers echo him, then drift away, leaving him alone beside the smouldering pyre. Matt Keener, with a hiss and a gesture, leads you over. He sniffs the air at the sound of your approach, and with a broad smile calls out, Keener! His eyes are large, milky marbles. He puts his hands on his shoulders. You return in unpleasant times. Makino touches his cheek. I return because the times are unpleasant, Ning. Without another word, the three of you leave from the fire and enter Ning's dark hut. Ning's home is humble and saturated. Uh, humble and small, hardly furnished and wholly undecorated. Don't know where I got saturated from. On entering, he lowers his weary bulk onto a cassock and gestures towards similar cushions for you and Makina, then begins with our preamble. They hung him from a tree, old garab, took their daggers to him, called a pruning, blind to the other's expressions. He has become obvi- oblivious to his own and wears his pain and anger nakedly. With a grunt, he continues... They could have sent him home by they sent him home by schema along with the compact that made to the people of the plains. He waves the crumpled sheet of paper on the floor. Tick read it to me. They promised would an end to our menace, Kina. Why? We've always played the blood the blood price for whatever harm we've done. You know that. Yes, but the sad nights won't take shins. You know that. He grunts. The militia's here to help, Ning. You hear. You are who we stand for, the small, the threatened, the hunted. That's who we are, too. Come away. If you tell the knights you're going, they won't force a fight. They have bigger battles ahead of me, believe me. This is our place, Kina. Pudge reckon will give you a home. Trust her. Let's read the note. You unfold the compact sent by the Sand Knights. The writing is neat, plain, small, and seems to go on and on in tightly stacked lines. In essence, it's about to save the guard the villages of and towns of the Vexulian Waste from the menace in Colm Village. Uh, Knights promise they'll undertake steps to ensure the killers in Colm Village never harm anyone again. Exterminations never mentioned, merely implied. Beneath the Knight Marshal's chop are signatures from various burghers, mayors, and elders of towns and villages in the Waste. The Knights ask nothing in return for them. The signatures vow nothing. They merely endorse justifying whatever the knights undertake. This world is full of special of places. This hill of yours is nothing special. <sighs> Maybe that's true, stranger. This hill, this village, it's no more a home than anywhere else in the world. But we just can't go. Nang, Nang, I know this is your home. It was my home too. But it's not safe here. I reckon has settled side land for all of you, deep inside our territory, where can we can protect you. It's not so simple, not so easy. Plains people cannot understand. Makina hisses in frustration and gives you a look. It seems she's hoping you can move the stubborn old fool. The only time too late to start a new life is when you're dead. Give your people a chance to survive. I'll spend another point on that. You're right, of course, even if you're, you've got the manners of a Marga Marauder. After a few minutes, he turns bright eyes to Makina. But we can't go without the Jacques. The what? Up the hill, behind the gate, the cave's been sealed for generations. Inside is the Jacques. It's what helps us keep our worst instincts inside. If we leave its song, he trails off, gesturing to the pyre outside. I'll tell you how to unlock the gate. He describes how each turn must be disarmed, repeating it until he's sure you both remember. Now, you alone of the plains people know how to open the gate. You work your way up the terraced hillside, leaving Neng to make his case to his people. In the distance, you see the Sand Knights are on the move, riding hard towards Colm Village. Neng will need to make his case to them, too. When you arrive at the cave in its huge ancient ga- gateway, Makina shakes her head. For years I wondered about this. The hill people tell a fable that the first man and woman to come here uh, came out of here. They said the gate would only open when it was time for people to disappear. One way to keep the kids from poking around at that uh, and disturbing the Jacques, I guess. Something she said stirs your mind and you, your memories jingle like a wind chime. Let's try and dredge it up. One point one up. At once, a glaring light shines over your mission, as painful as it is revealing. You're not help, 
here to help Pudge reckon and save Calm Village. You're here to help Pudge destroy it. She knew the village's secret. She knew about the shark. Most importantly, she knew the Sand Knights would come. Knew about their compact. The plan isn't to take the villagers out of the Knights' way. In fact, it depends on causing the very battle Makina promised would be averted. When the Knights arrive, Pudge will destroy the shark forcing the hill people into their feral state, unleashing them upon the knights and weakening one of the militia's foes. And Pudge is coming in person to see it all goes right. Makina, we can't open that gate. Pudge reckons is planning to destroy the Jacques and with it, the entire village. You hardly relate your memory, Pudge's plot, how, how she and an armed band will be waiting to take the Jacques and destroy it in order to unleash tetra the Tetaramoths upon the Sand Knights in a living trap. At a certain level, the portrayal so audacious, the plot so callous, that it's unbelievable. At first, Makina is incredulous, but then her face hardens. Something's changed in you, Tash. You care. Something's changed for the better. Thank you. Then she t scans the horizon for Pudge, and so do you, but there's no sign of her. We need to get this away as quickly as we can. Draw Pudge off, binding time to negotiate with the Sand Knights, and keep them from the Jacques. You're barely a hundred meters up the hillside before a deafening shriek fills the air and seven people seem to drop out of the sky. One of them is a woman you know immediately to be Pudge Reckon. You know uh, the others must be her bodyguards. The tattooed cast-offs with drab armor, mismatched weapon, and the languid readiness of predators. Despite the surprise, Matkina flings a knife before they even hit the ground, and it slips between the plates in one's gl one glaive's armor. She's throwing another when a beam of light envelops her, trapping her in a field. As Matkina thrashes about, her attention their attention is clearly focused on her, giving you an opportunity, slight as it may be. Um, let's go with... Try to reason with them. You barely have a chance to open your mouth before one of the bodyguards steps uh, forward and with pretty natural speed and buries her fist in your gut. As you fall to your knees, she tops off with a kick to the face. While your head swims, she flips you over, disarms you, and hoists you back to your feet. The, uh, both of you are subdued. Pudge hardly seems happy. I don't know what game you're playing, Tash, and I don't particularly care. I just want the Jacques. Tell me how to open the cave and we'll go from there. She doesn't bother with a bribe or a threat, despite her soft, almost maternal features. She doesn't need to bluster. Her eyes say everything. Okay. Let's see. So we can try and fight them. We can say I won't let you destroy Makina's home, or we can lie to her. Deception. Mislead her about how to get into the cave. Wow, we can just flat out slam this all the way home. You quickly gin up a series of steps, and for the moment, Pudge believes you. She nods to one of her bodyguards, who sets off towards the cave to test your method. A few minutes later, he returns and shakes his head. Uh, Pudge sighs and lifts a finger. Before you can react, you're slapped over from by another bodyguard. As you fall to the ground, you watch him fling Makina over the cliff. Still wrapped in her energy field, she can't even scream. Pudge gives you one last annoyed glance and leads the others away. You cannot see where they go. Darkness gathers around your vision and sounds like crashing waves fills your ears and you slough off Tasha's body. Uh, uh, and then you slough off Tasha's body, Tasha's mind, and all goes black. As your consciousness rises from the shadow of the mare, something clicks in your mind. Something's changed deep inside you, but what? Makina stares at you, the shock painfully obvious on her face. What What did you do? I remember Tash cutting me. I see the holes in my mind. I remember him forcing me to the ground, tearing out my history with his tides. But but I have other memories now. They're, they're real. Tash didn't do it. He could have, but he didn't. He tried, but didn't. He didn't touch me, didn't violate me. But I remember his mind pushing at me, but no. Two strands of memory. This is pulling me apart. She looks at you. Tears streaming down her face. No, it's pushing me together. I remember now that hole. It's almost gone. You changed reality. You changed it. She stands, drying her tears with her sleeves. Don't know if you meant to do that, but you've done more than your part of the deal. You asked about the residence chamber? I know of it. Mazov's the guy you want. He can fix anything. He might have even helped design the chamber you're talking about. Your best bet's to look around the cast-off sanctuary. Miela Vest. The cast-off sanctuary? It's a sanctum, a refuge, created by the first Nassai, shielded from the sorrow, supposedly. Our siblings like to hide there until they can't stand each other's company anymore. Personally, I don't think anyone's anywhere safe from the sorrow, not even that place. Uh, could you take me there? I could really use your help. 
Too much of a crowd with you already, but I'll show you the way to get there. What a caution. They won't believe you in my yellow vest. They'll treat you like they treat every new cast off, as a pawn in their games with each other. Look out for that. She walks to a table and unrolls a map of the Sega's protectorate. You're not going to find it by walking there. The entrance is a secret known only to our kind. Here, the Valley of Dead Heroes. She points to a, map, a spot on the map many kilometers northeast of Sega's cliffs. There's a hidden portal in the necropolis. Also, memorize this. She writes the numbers down. Three, four, three, one. On a slip of paper. Holds it in front of your eyes for several seconds and crumbles it in your hand. It's a code. It'll make sense once you get to the necropolis. You'll need a sh- airship to get to the valley. The ladder over there leads up to the caravanserai. Should be able to hire a ship without too much difficulty. Thank you, Makina, and farewell. Boom. Place out. Now, yeah. careless stage. Level up. Um, ability or skill? What's ability? Uh, what are the ability options here? Nah, skill. Um, let's go with perception. Sure. Now, uh, you level up, improve skill. So what do we want to give her? Uh, she actually doesn't have hiding, which I find particularly interesting. Uh, because that's kind of her thing. Uh, let's give her more quick fingers. And she's now got the Cloak of Isle. Boosts everyone's stealth and evasion and chances to hit and we can give her resourcefulness or innovate which allows her to heal i think i'm going to give her resourcefulness ah and then she gets more skill increases so she can't take quick thinking anymore we could do all right that would actually have been really that combos really well with the other one uh let's give her running so she's faster as well Alrighty, so that's all cool. What we'll do now is we're going to talk family, to Kellestige. Uh, do you miss yours? No, as a matter of fact, but I've had far longer to grow used to life without them than you have. We need to part ways. <sighs> well then, farewell for now. You won't be gone long. So Kellestige, I, I mean, you're nice and all. But I want her. Hey, Makina! Join me. Would you travel with me? Nothing here requires my attention, I suppose. Fine. I'm investigating some murders in the underbelly. I haven't killed anyone in the underbelly for years, but uh, what? can you give me some clues? I did find a clue in the underbelly murders, a circle containing a triangle bearing a bleeding eye, with another triangle breaking the circle from the right. I'll remember that. The children of the Endless Gate. <sighs> a splinter sect of the Dendro her. Both of them gifts from, to the world from our beloved siblings. The Dendro are mostly harmless, disgusting as they are, worthless as their creator is. They have a chapel in the underbelly. Go talk to them. Uh, okay. How many castoffs are there, anyway? Hundreds? Who knows? Supposedly the Chasing God went to other worlds, bent time and space, slipped through dimensions, and has always had spare bodies with him. Could be thousands, millions for all I know. Um, what's the story with you and these other cast-offs? You're in the mayor. You saw what happened. They wanted, I wanted to make a difference. They pissed on my hopes. After that debacle, I, uh, debacle, I killed Tash and fell out with the rest of them. She frowns. A conflict between the first and the changing god swallows our, all our siblings one way or another. Didn't want that. I wanted to make my own way. They weren't pleased, and here I am. No worse for their lack of company. Who's the first? First cast off? She was, or she claimed to be. She's dead now. She said she'd fight for all of us. They say she was the one who founded Miela Vest for our sakes. Most of our siblings know her as a hero. Most of them never actually knew her. She was driven, I'll give her that, even with her decaying body, with all its hurts and wounds. She had masks to cover herself and the strength not to hurt, and kept plowing on. What about changing God? Brilliant, charming, ruthless, self-centered. More blood on his hands than I'll ever have. Legend says he wiped out the Tabat, a nearly complete genocide. He left one alive as an object lesson, one of the generals enslaved in the city to teach his enemies not to cross him. Um, well, can you tell me about this place? This is a cave of last words. It was a thieves' hole until the tunnel leading in collapsed five, six hundred years ago. It was where the scum of the city would slip away from the city guard before there were levies, before the slave families. The truly desperate lawbreakers fled here when they had no other options. 
That there, that's a suicide tunnel. Words on the cave walls, those are the final words of people with nothing left to lose. Etched into the bedrock of the city, burned in and out by the hopeless. A fitting metaphor. Almost wrote my own words there many, many times. Not that diving off a cliff would have ended me. Then there's a ledge at the end of the tunnel, just in case those words are inspirational. The view is also quite nice. How'd you find this place? I listened to the stories of old thieves, went to the bloom and listened to the stories of Sheila. I made my friends with a stitcher and asked them if they knew about a place like this. Turns out they did. Okay, great. Uh, let's go loot things. Fleet foot moss, and yep, sure. And of here. Course. Father Teller. Handheld mirror, but you get to see a picture of your father. Or a species equivalent looking back at you, mirroring every move. When you hold it though, all you see is your own face. So. What is here? Tunnel once led in this direction. Fine. This is going to go up, this is going to go out. I will hope to go this way so I can, specifically so I can go out this way. Um, yep, yeah, there's the hatch opened. So. We've got... Actually, I should have left the other way, but now we've opened this way, right? So now we can get in and out of this place. Huh, interesting. Anyway, um, what we can do is we can All use... Right. Out with it. Uh, nothing. Let's keep going. All right. Oh, I also haven't done the partial level. I'll do that in a bit. Whatever. It's not a big deal. So, right. what we're going to do is we're going to leave through this hole. Enter the tunnel. Great. So, we will uh, see if we can uh, get to the Dendro of her. Why the heck was Rin down there? That's weird. And uh, then we'll continue on next time with chatting to the Dendro of her. Unless, wait, no, we want to talk to Fulsome and then the Dendro of her. So I'll talk to Fulsom, and then next time will be the chat with the Dendro of her. The fat man's gaze shifts to Makina, his expression hardens further. Makina, you will tell me if you know anything about this murder, he says, gesturing at the, bl the bloody floor with the ringed hand. If you are responsible, you will reveal the name of your employer. Now! You know me better than that. Or should. Should I? Very well. Lend your expertise to the task at hand. Find the killer. I suggest you try your hardest. We've discovered that the children of the Endescape may be involved in Weedle's murder. Interesting. Mvitu told me the group had been crushed long ago. Count as a favor if you continue your investigation. Speak with Mvitu and his colleague, his acolytes. Tell me if you believe one of them is responsible. Mvitu called the second infection once. Perhaps they relapsed. Thanks. I'll do that. All right. So next time we go chat with the Dendro Oha. But I wanted to make sure we got permission so we could kind of force that on them. Until then, have a great day. Bye. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you spending the time and effort watching the videos I make. Uh, if you'd like to watch more, on the left there should be another video from this playlist. On the right there will be whatever YouTube recommends. And in the center there is a convenient subscribe button just in case you need it.